Okay, so what we will do, we will tackle in this panel is give a, a tour de force on, on the current challenges that we have in compliance and there's more and more stuff on, on, the, on the plate for compliance as we saw in our first talk from our founders that all these bubbles are, are popping up and uh, Cecilia is al already doing almost everything of these bubbles and uh, the, the, then the, there's even um, ESG that's, that also gets in there so how can we um, so this thing, how can we um, manage all these these different new hats that that compliance needs to to fill up, and at the same time, business challenges are growing. You want to grow, but you don't want to be the department of no. How can you do that? So, uh, Annabelle, you are, you're you're smiling at the at the department of no. So how 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 do you avoid giving this exp this impression that you always say that you that you are the kind of the party pooper of the company and and they are out there they want to grow and do amazing stuff and then you say no, can't do that. To be honest, I cannot avoid it. Uh -huh. um, I am the person who always yeah. says no or who hesitates. I'm, um, mm -hmm. I'm always um, having my foot on the brake and uh, trying to process this, yeah, to slow them down and to make sure that we are um, compliant and we stay compliant. And yeah. Yeah, that's a challenge. Right. So in a way that that comes with the job, it's just the way how you do it. Yeah. So. Uh, other um, secrets of success, how to do this in a, in a way so that people still come to you. Uh, ideally, that they come to you before you have to rescue them again because they messed up, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the key of it, to be involved as yeah. early as possible and to be basically in the mind of the management before they come up with mm -hmm. a great idea, oh, we might expand to this market, or oh, yeah. let's change this process, or mm -hmm. I don't know, let's change this. Let's sh so it's important to be involved, to know what's going on in the heads, so you actually have the time to step in or do your research uh, or consult external counsels if need be, um, mm -hmm. so you can catch basically the risk early on, or even steer them into the right direction. Well, yeah, that will <laughs> so be even more class. subtle. Um, Barbara, I, I, since you are so sorry, sorry. experienced, it would be really good to know how do you do that. So you yep. are you are you um, are you um, nurturing your internal allies and stakeholder system? What's how do you do that? I mean, I think um, there are only two possibilities. The one is the proximity to business, right? So really liaise with people in the business, liaise with your first line of defense. Make sure that you're really on top of their challenges, that you also can advise on emerging risks. I think that's the one part. And then a second part about communication better to come with solutions, um, not with problems, and um, uh, always trying to well define the gray zone, right? So how far can people go? What is the ultimate risk they can incur reasonably? Um, and also, I think it's uh, important for control functions to take decisions quickly. So I think no is probably most of the time the easiest solution, but uh, really to make sure uh, to, to, to really go in the depth of the gray zone and advise people accordingly. Yeah, yeah I agree, but I would just add something regarding um, procedure and internal processes and so on, uh, which worked quite well. It's here is that I, well, my team and I invited ourselves in processes. We just imposed ourselves. But how not in just a police form like here, listen to us, is that we showed that we were actually useful. So I'll give, mm -hmm. I'll give you two examples. At TIER, uh, we do tenders with cities, for example. So we have to comply with obligations we have. So for example, we have data protection obligations, but also X amount of scooters we need to deliver in the city and so on. And so the business quite, was quite on top of it, but they were you know, not sure about what, what they were supposed to do in the long run. And so we offered our help in order to make sure we could track our compliance with requirements. That took a lot of work from us, but the benefits were huge. So because they saw um, the benefits of our involvement, they started including us more and more in processes. So that's just one uh, example, but I could tell you so many. And so now they go to us for any process where risk is involved. 
And the other thing that contributes to that is ERM, so enterprise risk management. And that's the advantage of owning a lot of topics is that I have oversight every single risk in a company. So I have a whole management pr uh, system uh, where I see all the risks. And that includes obviously typical compliance, uh, data protection, cybersecurity, and so on, but also the business risks. So you link everything, and that also see, the business sees the benefit of that, right? Because you're, you're linking everything. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Anna. Yeah, I think I might have also a slight uh, advantage in, rel in relation to, to a lot of other compliance um, professionals because I worked in operations for three years. So I left the compliance world. I went into HR and then operations. I got very upset sometimes with the compliance teams and the data <laughs> privacy teams because they would not let me do them things. Okay. So for me, it's really important to usually try not to say no or say no, but there's an alternative to always try to find an alternative solution for uh, the teams, or if we have to say no, to say it in a very understandable way. Why are we saying no? Mm. So not just going and say no, but really explaining to adults. As you mentioned in yeah. your uh, keynote before, we are talking to adults, so they will understand if we explain it correctly. But I'm, I always tell my team, never only say no, that doesn't work. I have been on the other side, I would sometimes yeah. have urge to strangle someone if they would just tell me no. So <laughs> please be considered that people, especially in, when you work in a tech company, innovation is key, right? So people yeah. have ideas. We want people to have ideas. Um, right. So yeah, don't be the no sayer. Be the yes, no, but. Yeah. Or you can even try, that's a, t a trick from communication and improvisation theater. You say, yes, and. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you should avoid, it, it, it helps avoiding yes, uh, no, yes, but, because then people are already up in arms. But I really like the point Anna and, and made, uh, made about uh, you need in compliance, it's, it's uh, so challenging because you, you need to know a lot of stuff. You need to know your compliance stuff, which is already mind-blowingly complex. But then you also need to have really deep knowledge about the business, right? So... That, that's really epic, heroic work. Okay, which brings us to uh, my the second uh, question round, and we had it already with all the... So how, how, how can we manage this kind of um, synergy, this, this, uh, the building bridges between privacy, privacy, information security, and compliance? So, so what... But I probably want to start with Cecilia here because she already does this and so we can learn from her, but also um, Annabelle is a one-woman show and uh, Fulia, you too, right? Yeah, sort of, yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's an evolution. So I, mm -hmm. I think what will be relevant here is to explain the evolution at TIER. So I joined TIER two years ago. I was alone in compliance. Didn't really know the, the concept of compliance. There was uh, IT security, uh, which was quite solid. Uh, data protection was one, but compliance was nada. Uh, and I got hired because our investors wanted me. <laughs> it's often like that. Um, and so there I started alone and then progressively through the two years. So now uh, I have a team of 12 and we own so all these topics. So just to show you the progression. And why that progression, it's a mix of two things. Um, the industry, that's really tough for us. There's a lot of competition, so we're suffering a lot. Uh, finances are hard, so investors are not investing as much. And so you need to downgrade uh, teams, so that has an impact. But also, luckily, uh, top management of the company saw the benefits of linking all these topics. And so we have a, so everything's under me, but it's not even about that. It's more like we have weeklies and we do all the projects, most big projects together. And that's the ERM project, for example, that we do together. Um, and that gives us a lot of power in the company because we're all aligned. We know exactly what's, what's happening. We update each other, obviously. But also we talk the same language, right? We're all about complying mm -hmm. with something uh, yeah. and implementing processes and so on. So it makes us stronger together. Uh, I, I don't really actually, I can't even imagine a world where we work in silos anymore. Right. For me, it's yeah, just it not doesn't, possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I would really be curious to see... Uh, 
the take of Barbara here since uh, it's a completely different industry and world and a much bigger organization, of course, yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. But uh, however, it's 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 really what has been said before. Um, stay connected to the people. Really making sure that risk management, compliance, audit, um, all risk managers are working very very closely together. That we have a similar and aligned risk view. And I think uh, automation can help a lot as well. So we're yeah. scaling with uh, automation. Um, so with having not only audit tools but databases, having data analytics in place. Um, so I think that's uh, that's really the key in order. To have this uh, GRC view, this uh, governance risk compliance view um, on, on all the risk topics. So what I very much liked uh, when, when Anna said that uh, actually uh, on the risk management pers uh, perspective, she's seeing all, 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 all the risk. I think that's really key that uh, this alignment constantly takes place also in view of this upcoming risk, right? So it's not so much about what has happened in the past, but more mm -hmm. about what, what's the emerging risk? What can, what's, what's the next big thing? What's, what's coming up there? Yeah, that's a, a very good point. So we will get back to automation in a minute. But before, uh, I would like to know from Anne, because she's also in a, in a kind of new area with uh, Free Now and uh, a mobility company that offers taxi apps, scooters, and, and car sharing services. So here we are also on, on new grounds for all things compliance and, and data security. Can Could you show us around a little bit in this in this space. Yeah, absolutely. And for us, it's really important that we have a very strong relationship with information security. So I don't come from the uh, tech background. I have a food retail background, but food retail is heavily tech. So, so there's, very, very, there's a lot of tech involved. Um, so I always had a very strong connection with the information security teams. I know that it's super important to have this strong connection with them. And especially also for free now, we sit, um, I, to be honest, when I joined the company, I thought it was kind of strange because information security sits under the general counsel. So it's part of the governance structure. Um, usually it had always been for me under the IT head somewhere, close, really, close connect, connection to data protection, but never under the same head. Um, nowadays, I say this is for me, uh, I'm really, really glad about that they sit with us. We have constantly into exchange of ideas. Also, they translate for me all the technical stuff into language that I can understand so that I can, that we can all support the business from our different points of views, but it's of course, as for a company like Freenow, it's really important that we have a strong information security team and that we all work together. So, um, and that we really have alliances amongst each other. If something pops up on the information security side that they call us in immediately and vice versa. And the same goes for the legal team. So for me, information security, um, yeah, yeah, as I said, it's one of the strongest uh, allies, and it's really important to build this alliance with the information security team. Okay, yeah, very interesting, and which brings us a little bit back to our title of compliance governance. So how, how should compliance be organized in an organization? And that uh, keeps being a, a discussion, and uh, I, what I see a lot is a uh, um, a certain inbuilt in conflict of interest between legal and compliance because legal has a little uh, yeah, so, yeah okay so since Annabelle already jumped at this question I want to hear about it and uh, just adding that what I uh, see as um, as one emerging trend from the Nordics who tend to be quite advanced in compliance and ethics is that uh, their um, one company I know a little bit better, there the ethics officer now is over, is uh, guiding, is uh, managing also the legal department, which is also comes with interesting challenges. But for me, of course, as a business ethics makes total sense. So let, let's hear about uh, this from Annabelle. So as you already said, I'm a one woman show. Yeah. So um, I'm, um, so you're integrating <laughs> the conflict of interest in yourself. In myself, so. right, yeah. <laughs> so the legal department, um, the compliance officer, data security, all in one person. And um, that's really hard to balance uh, yeah. sometimes. Um, and it's a challenge. And I'm getting really jealous when I hear that uh, there are so uh, big teams uh, behind my other colleagues. Because um, sometimes it's it's really hard. There are two hearts in, in 
my chest, mm -hmm. um, beating for different mm -hmm. yeah, solutions, and mm -hmm. I have to make a decision. And um, mm -hmm. I, um, yeah, in, in a perfect world, I, I take the perfect decision, the best decision for the company, and the best decision in ethical uh, yeah. regards. And who usually yeah, wins? <laughs> the ethical regards yeah. Are, yeah. are strong because our company um, yeah. has an ethical approach. And okay, um, great. Yeah. That's very that helpful. Fits. I guess, yeah. yeah. I guess this is where the difference comes from. You need the, this kind of basic decision from yes. the very top. Fulia, can you also uh, add to this? I mean, same. Same as Annabelle. I'm also a one-woman show. And um, it's a, it is, there is this conflict, but I do also see the benefits. Because this merge of these different, um, you know, topics is... That's basically when you realize. And then the only person that I would have to add from my point of view, and I do have a bi-weekly, even if we don't uh, chat about you know, specific things, is I think it's important to stay in touch, is our um, um, IT administrator, for example. <clears throat> so I think it's, yeah, it's just, you know, when you're like a one-woman show, you also get to have the oversight of... right. It's you who decides. Things. Yeah. Plus, um, yeah, I mean, you can go to sleep at nights and be like, okay, I know I did this today and I know this is covered without maybe that day talking to whatever your compliance right. officer, if that will be a different person. Yeah, so so yeah. I think it's also beneficial. Right. Which uh, brings us to, and, and Barbara said it before, so automation. So how, how, how much can automation help here? And of course, it, it's a, well, it's a, as, as most tech stuff, it's a double-edged sword, sword because you can, it can be very helpful, but there are also, so what other challenges involved? It would be interesting. Maybe, since uh, Barbara started with animation, so maybe you can start on that. So what, what are you uh, using yes. at the moment? What, what is uh, the advantage? What, what, do we, what are the challenges? Yeah, so I mean, I'm working more or less for a tech company, right? So we are a market infrastructure provider. So we are currently leveraging uh, and uh, putting all our processes into cloud. So we have a lot of analytical tools um, which we can use. So uh, on the one hand, our corporate IT is SAP. So we have the uh, analytical cloud for that. Um, and we have a lot of uh, automation in the tools itself. In addition, we are exploring AI, so language mm -hmm. learning models, uh, which are really interesting. So we're not so far developed that uh, our AI, Alfred, is already writing our audit reports, but at least he can compare policies mm -hmm. among each other. He can show differences. He uh, can look at legal text and so on. So mm -hmm. that's something which is uh, parts of um, our AI. Okay. Um, another option we are using um, goes more in, in the sense of investigation, forensics, or the data analytics, um, and that's uh, also what is done, for instance, at the, at the new bank uh, I'm working for okay. as, as a hobby. So I think there are a lot of options, but uh, you have to try and you have to be open to it, and uh, yeah, there are for sure a lot of yeah. challenges. Of course, with the, with the, you mentioned investigations, and then with AI you have possibilities I, I read recently uh, for real-time monitoring of employees emails and video call communication there again we are hitting some some murky grounds in data privacy uh, is uh, and that's of course um, yeah t difficult to decide uh, maybe uh, and you c c can you s are you, you want to comment on this uh, yeah, and especially for me, also having compliance and data privacy, of course, right. um, it, it gets into a very gray zone and mm -hmm. also depends on which markets you operate in, right? So for companies, of course, in the US, it's different than a company that's head oh, yeah. uh, headquartered in Germany. Um, so I think it's, for me, automation, I'm a huge fan of automation where possible. So for, especially for administrative tasks or to take away the burden for, from, especially for com smaller teams or from mm -hmm. one woman shows. Right. So um, we use, we use automation for sanction screening, also for fraud and investigations and for other tests that can be done easily in an automated way right. and free up time for, for the, especially for smaller teams. 
Um, but again, how far can you go and how far do you want to go? And also, I think it's key that you inform your employees what you're doing so that they are completely aware that certain things are being done and in what way. Um, but again, I'm especially coming from a, from a company, from a food retailer where a lot of things have to be automated because of the scale. Um, so I, I really, I think there are a lot of opportunities, but also it's always important to look at the risks and again, the gray zones, especially when you go into the field of data protection and when you're dealing with people. Yeah, I was talking to some investigators recently and they also said that it's hard to imagine that you can really substitute this feeling, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, which, since we are a little bit back in our time, we leave it here. Uh, thank you very much, ladies. And we are. We can. Do I have time for questions? Yeah. Any questions for the panel here? No, no, no. I don't see hands raised. Questions? Yeah, of course. Yes. Um, <clears throat> to the whole panel, I have one, um, uh, from my point of view, important question. You bear, as a compliance officer, you bear a lot of individual risk. <laughs> How do you handle it? What is the most important issue for you? Is it to ask the right uh, questions, or is it the documentation, as example, in an integrated PIC documentation system or something like that? What is your approach? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, compliance is part of my department, but I'm not officially a compliance officer. I'm, um, <laughs> for reasons, <laughs> for reasons, yeah, um, and uh, documentation is key for me. It's really, really important to, docu to, to make a documentation about everything that I said, everything I warned, everything I, everything was told me, so, um, yeah, documentation. That's the most important fact for me. Short and crisp, totally agree. It's same situation, um, you know, data privacy, yes, okay, I'm into that. Compliance just was handed over, comes with it, and comes with a lot of risk. So um, documentation is key, I would say. And, um, yeah. I would also, so documentation for audit trail, right? Uh, but also any related to that is holding your shareholders, your top management accountable. So it's not only mm -hmm. on me, but it's also on them. And that's a reminder I make quite regularly to them, <laughs> is that they are liable actually. Right. Uh, so it's not only on me, it's on them. Uh, and I have, you know, I put everything in writing as well. Um, but I think, yeah, it's the documentation aspect is even further. It's all the comms you do and so on. Um, and yeah, and I think the, the risk part as well is regarding investigations, especially if you litigation after, uh, and that's where I, you have to have a tool, obviously there's an there's a act about it, but that's where I'm really uh, strict about documenting, like you have to have a whole trace. But it depends, and also it depends on the industry, like tier, like financial industry, it's the risk is super high, right? But for my industry, it's quite limited compared to that other industry. So I do, that's why I'm all about risk assessments and risk management. Like you need to know where your risk is and that will Very influence the point. liability. Yeah. Barbara, would you like to say anything about it? Because yeah, financial. <laughs> yeah, she's nodding so much. <laughs> Yes. No, no, indeed. I mean, I was uh, six years uh, money laundering officer and compliance officer, and you always have this personal liability, right? And uh, regulators will come directly personally after you. Uh, I have seen many, many cases happening. Um, people also drawn before court and really having to pay damages. So documentation is key. However, don't document too much. By leading a lot of investigations, you will see every word you ever have written down in a complete different context. So really know what you document. Document just a bit and make sure that you have talked with the people before so that um, your words are really un unambiguous. And uh, yeah, that's an art, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and to close uh, and anything you would like to add to documentation no, I, that it seems to be the I key. couldn't agree more with, I couldn't agree more than with Barbara because it's really you need to know how to document so don't over document don't under document really find the right balance and don't also 
yeah, just put things only to show that you are putting things. So it's really important to be to document everything, but in the right way. Cool. And with that, like big round of applause to the ladies panel. Thank you very much.